You may be seated. Hello, Your Honor. Hello. This is the case of Edwards versus Morris. Thank you, Jerome. Good day, everyone. Ms. Edwards, you're here to solve a 20-year mystery and prove that the defendant fathered your daughter, Brianne, who is joining us from her hometown. You say you are tired of his denial and hope to prove your case today. You are here supported by your older daughter, Caitlin. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Morris, you claim that you've always known that another man is Brianne's biological father, and you are here to set the record straight. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. So, uh, Mr. Morris, what was the nature of your relationship with the plaintiff before she got pregnant? Years ago, I, I run a little garage in a small town, and her husband, I got to know him, and we wound up getting threesome in my backyard. And a threesome in the backyard? Uh, in the field behind my house, yes. A threesome in the backyard? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> With your friend's wife? Yes, yes, ma'am. A threesome in the backyard with your friend's wife. I just digested that. Now, how often were you having these threesomes? We done it a couple times, and then uh, I kind of moved moved off to another county, and things went on. But back then, if you wore panties and opened up, drop them. I, I got me some. I mean, that's. <laughs> that's Yes, he, did. he said that. Yes, he did. <laughs> well, you didn't come here to lie, did you? No, no ma'am. I know that's right. Go ahead and tell the truth. Shame the devil. <laughs> right? <laughs> so, Mr. Morris, did you ever find out Miss Edwards was pregnant when... Because you say yeah. you moved on. Yes, ma'am. Sometime later, I did. How did you find out? Uh, they come to where I had moved to and told me that she was uh, pregnant. So they came and saw you in person? Yes, yes. And said, they, we have something to tell you? Yes, they were coming to my house on the weekend sometimes. Oh, for more threesomes? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Small town. So, Miss Edwards, you went through the whole pregnancy. Did you tell your husband this could potentially be Mr. Morris's child that you thought it could? No, Your Honor, I did not. I thought it was my husband's all along. At what point did you decide that it could be Mr. Morris's? When she was born. Um, I was on the operating table, and they uh, brought her around the curtain. And as soon as I seen her, I knew she was Wayne's then because she had his forehead. No. And she was born with a cleft. No. When you birthed the baby, you say they brought her from around the curtain after they got her. Right. You, she bent that corner and you said, there goes Mr. I said, Morris. I said, uh-oh. <laughs> yeah. You and said, uh-oh? Yeah, right. That right. was your reaction? Yes, Your Honor. To your new baby? <laughs> yes, Your Honor. And then what did you say to your husband? Um, I didn't tell him till the next day that it was possibly not his. And what does he say? He says, she's mine. She just looks like you. Did you tell him you think it could be Mr. Morris's? Yes. As the years went, as, as the time went by, I decided to let him know that he was the father. So, Mr. Morris, do you remember that day? Pretty close. Uh, what happened? Uh, the first time that I was told she could be mine was the one that Brianna was around a year old, I think. Pretty sure of that. Oh, so they come and tell you she's pregnant, but they don't ever let on to the fact that it could be yours. No, not then. So how did Miss Edwards tell you uh, specifically that she thought I, you were Rianne's biological father? I don't remember father? exactly how she said it, but I didn't think so because none of my children was ever born with a clip lip. And not, nobody in my family as well. So, Miss Edwards, but when you said you saw Brianna and she had the cleft palate, you thought immediately it was Mr. Morris's. Exactly, uh, Your Honor. Um... The reason I thought he was, or, or knew that he was the father was because um, he had mentioned to me uh, at one point in time that he had a rare blood and that the mother of his children was, uh, had to have shots whenever they were pregnant. Why? Or else what? The, the baby would be born with a birth, birth defect. Your Honor. Oh. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. So, 
Did you tell Miss Edwards, Mr. Morris, that the other mothers of your children had to have shots because yeah, of your rare yeah, blood? Yes, I did, Your To Honor, avoid the baby having birth defects? I don't know what the shot was for, but all of my children were perfectly healthy. But were you ever told that these shots were necessary to avoid birth defects because of your blood type? No, I wasn't never told, no. I mean, I do know the mothers had a shot, except... So you are aware that they were given those shots? Yes, except my, la my little so, boy... So, Miss Edwards, told. it's your testimony. Because you knew this, you felt that because Grand was born with the cleft palate that you didn't get the shot, and so, therefore, this is why this occurred, and that leads you to believe Mr. Morris is her biological father. Yes, Your Honor. It does. All right. I want to hear from Brianne. She's joining us now from her hometown. Brianne, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. If you want more episodes of Paternity Court, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell. Brianne, growing up, did you know that your mother doubted your paternity? Did you know that Mr. Morris could potentially be your biological father? Yes, ma'am. Growing up, I was told by my mother and family that Mr. Morris was my father. But what about her husband? They had always told me that he wasn't my father and that I had a different father than my siblings. From birth, you say they just told you Mr. Morris is your biological father? Yes, ma'am. So you felt like you were just being honest from the beginning? Yes, Your Honor. I was. She needed to know. And so did you have a relationship with Mr. Morris? No, ma'am, not really. Not from what I recall. Caitlin, I want to ask you, did you grow up with the understanding that your sister Brienne had a different biological father? Yes, I did, Your Honor. And you always knew it was Mr. Morris as well? I did. I have a birthmark on the back of my head, and my sister does not have a birthmark. And my other siblings had the same exact birthmark as well as my children. And um, Brienne does not look like me. I feel like she looks like Wayne's uh, girls. No, no. And I've just never felt like she was related to me other than through my mother because she just doesn't look like us. And so it's always been an understanding with your siblings that Brienne had a different father. Yes, Your Honor. So, Mr. Morris, your wife is here. I'd like to hear from her. Please stand, ma'am. <coughs> your Honor. Yes, ma'am. All of our children have some kind of resemblance to my husband. My husband has seven children. Every one of them has some kind of feature of his, whether it be eyes, walk, talk, something. Even his smart mouth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Brienne, Brienne, she doesn't have that. None of our children are, are shy. What are you holding? I'm holding evidence of two of our daughters. I'd like to see that. Jerome, will you hand it to me, please? Thank you. That shows that Brienne looks nothing like neither one of our daughters. Thank you. So this is a split screen of two of Mr. Morris's daughters, Brienne in the middle. Yes, ma'am. And as you see, I mean, they have some kind of feature of him in some sort of way. Brienne has none of that. She, she, I mean, our girls have his nose, his, his lazy eye, his forehead. <laughs> And our girls are very outspoken, not shy. Like I said, they're not shy. But, Miss Edwards, you believe the fact that you were even told by Mr. Morris that mothers of his children had to have a shot to prevent potential birth defects because of his rare blood further indicates that he really is your daughter's biological father. Yes, Your Honor. All right. Well, we wanted to learn more about these medical issues that we've discussed. Um, and at this time, Jerome, would you please escort Dr. Frida Fisher into the courtroom? Yes, Your Honor. I'd like to ask her a few questions. We're going to go right up to the witness stand next to the judge. Watch your step going. Yes. 
Hello, Dr. Fisher. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, thank you. We have had a very interesting time today discussing <laughs> some complex testimony uh, given by Mr. Morris. Ms. Edwards also testified that two of his children's mothers have had to have some type of injection before they gave birth to prevent birth defects because of his blood type or rare blood qualities. What, do you understand what this is and can you explain it to this court? Well, there is something called the RH factor. Okay. The RH factor is a protein that's found on red blood cells in the blood. When a mother does not have the RH factor, she is considered to be RH negative. If an RH negative mother has a baby who is RH positive, that mother can actually develop antibodies against her own unborn baby's blood. Mm. So the RH negative mother can attack her own her unborn own baby. baby and this can cause disease. Mm. And then what mm -hmm. does that have to do with the father's blood? Well, the only way that an RH negative mother can have an RH positive baby is if the father's blood is RH positive. Okay. And so, Mr. Morris, have you ever been told that your blood was RH positive? I was told it was A positive. I don't know nothing about the RH and other stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that means he also has the RH factor. Yeah. So he's RH positive. We think. Okay. And with their two blood types, RH positive, RH negative, could they produce a child that potentially had a birth defect? An RH positive father with an RH negative mother can have a child who is RH positive. And if the mother does not receive the shot, the RH immune globulin, she can develop antibodies that attack that baby and cause disease. But it has not been shown to cause birth defects, like a cleft palate. All right. Now, after hearing the doctor's testimony and understanding now that Breanne's cleft palate was not caused because Mr. Morris was RH positive and you are RH negative, do you still believe Mr. Morris is your child's biological father? Yes, Your Honor. That doesn't change your mind in any way? No, it doesn't. I mean, there's no other possibility. So, Mr. Morris... Yes, After hearing this testimony, have your thoughts changed? Has your position changed? No, ma'am. You do not think you're Brienne's biological father? No, ma'am, I don't. And what, what are your hopes? I mean, if you are, are you hoping that you are, but you don't think you are? What are your hopes today? If I am, I will hope to be a, a father figure in her life and her be a daughter figure. With that said, I think it's time we get these results. Thank you, Jerome. Brianne? Yes, ma'am. Before I read these results, what are you hoping for today? I'm hoping to find out who my father is so I can be able to answer questions at the doctors and know my background, medical history, and to possibly have a bond with whoever happens to be my father. So, these results are more important than ever to this young girl, and I want right. you to get them right now. Are you ready, Brianne? Yes, ma'am. All right. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics, and they read as follows. In the case of Edwards versus Morris, when it comes to 20-year-old Brianne, it has been determined by this court. Mr. Morris. Yes, ma'am. You are the father. <laughs> Brianne, this is your biological father. Yes, ma'am. How does it feel to know for certain now? Feels pretty good to have answers that I've always needed. 
Would you like to have a relationship with Mr. Morris? Yes, ma'am. What are you feeling in this moment, Mom? It was her. It's the reason I'm here. Only her. I'm, I didn't do it for me. I didn't do it for her. I didn't do it for them. I done it for her. And that's what a mother's love, a parent's love, will propel them to do for their child. You will sacrifice yourself for your child. Exactly. And I saw you do that today. So, Mr. Morris, you've got a great opportunity here. Yes, ma'am. You've got a new daughter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's time for you to make up, what, 20 years lost time. You got that right. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got a lot of making up to do. I will do my very best. Good. So, family, we have counseling and resources for you all. I want you to take advantage of it and just start, meet where you are and go from there one step at a time. I wish you all the very best. Court is adjourned. <laughs>